did that seriously just happen? Well, that does happen every oh. once in a while. That can't be good. Uh, now, uh, Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 awkward moments in live TV history. Right in the pussy. For this list, we're taking a look at offensive, humiliating, and downright shocking incidents that were captured on live TV, catching everyone off guard. <laughs> <laughs> We've excluded moments that were initially released on the internet, like Michael Bay's breakdown at Samsung's press conference. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Number 10, Martin Short's late wife, The Today Show. But you're still, like, in love. Madly in love. Madly wow. in love. Wow. Why? <laughs> cute. I'm cute. <laughs> in 2012, Martin Short dropped by The Today Show to promote Madagascar 3. Fire in the hole! started cheerfully as Funny Man Short discussed his family with Kathy Lee Gifford and Hoda Kotb. The interview suffered great turbulence, however, when Kathy Lee asked Short about his enduring marriage to Nancy Dolman. And he yeah. and Nancy have got one of the greatest marriages of anybody yeah. in show business. How mm -hmm. many years now for you guys? We uh, married 36 years. Apparently, Kathy Lee didn't get the memo that Nancy had passed away from ovarian cancer two years earlier. Okay, you guys, before we go on, I, um, uh, Martin just told me as he was leaving, he said, Kathy, you probably didn't know, but his beautiful, precious wife, Nancy, did pass away. Short was courteous enough not to tell Kathy Lee about his wife's departure on air, but behind his smile, we can clearly see the poor guy's grief. So my apologies to him and his family for not um, realizing that, but um, he's it's still, he's one of the he's, greatest he guys is. ever, he's ever, ever. Guy. Number nine, Tom Hanks drops the F-bomb, Good Morning America. Yes, we have, we have mic issues. Oh, that one? Tom Hanks is such a clean-cut everyman that it's actually hard to imagine him casually swearing. But the truth is, every person occasionally lets an F-bomb slip. Most, mostly it's swear words. On this 2012 episode of Good Morning America, Hanks channeled one of his many characters from Cloud Atlas. I think you're gonna love this one. <laughs> he got a little too into character, though, and uttered one of the seven words you can't say on TV. I, I want people to buy me book <laughs> Hanks immediately apologized to the audience and made fun of himself. It's awkward for sure, but few actors could play it off better than Hanks. I have never done that before. I would apologize to the kids in America that are watching this right oh, now. All and cool. let me say, next time on the show, there will be a seven-second delay. Number eight, Geraldo finds nothing in Al Capone's vault, the mystery of Al Capone's vaults. What secrets lie hidden inside Al Capone's vaults? Find out when we open it on live television. Al Capone was one of the most notorious and iconic gangsters in American history. When Geraldo Rivera hosted a live special unveiling the contents of Capone's secret vault in 1986, approximately 30 million people tuned in to see what treasures awaited. And nobody knows what's in it. Some say money. Some say body. Some say it's booby trap. And we're going to open it. The spoils of a vast criminal empire, the bodies of his enemies, whatever. In the ultimate anti-climax, Rivera and his crew found exactly nothing. I'm disappointed about that, as I'm sure you are. This is one time in my life that a uh, pot of gold would have been a lot more fun than uh, chasing the rainbows. With no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, Rivera apologized to the audience, half-heartedly sang a song, and slinked off in defeat. And I promised all the critics that if we didn't find anything, I'd sing a song. So, uh, uh, Chicago, Chicago, that toddling town. All right, I'm going. I'll see you. To date, the blunder has been mocked in popular culture mercilessly. There was nothing in Al Capone's vault, but it wasn't Geraldo's fault. No! Number seven, the Balloon Boy interview, Larry King Live. Millions watched on live television as a weather balloon flew high over the skies of the state. Heaney reported his six-year-old may have been inside. The Balloon Boy hoax took America by storm for about five seconds in 2009, when Richard and Mayumi Heaney allegedly released a gas balloon that unbeknownst to them had their son Falcon inside. Later that day, the six-year-old boy was found hiding in his house. But he was hiding out because he thought you were going to punish him for something that happened earlier in the day. Uh, did he hear anything? Did he hear you screaming out, Falcon, Falcon? When Wolf Blitzer interviewed the family, Falcon revealed that his parents had cooked up this entire ruse as a publicity stunt. We did this for a show. 
In exchange for his 15 minutes of fame, Papahini was sentenced to 90 days in jail and paid tens of thousands in restitution. Richard Heaney pleaded guilty and apologized for orchestrating the incident last October that captivated the nation. Now, if only Falcon could really fly away from his parents' clutches. One of the guys told me it was for some uh, TV show. So that's what he was referring to. Number six, Samuel L. Jackson or Lawrence Fishburne, KTLA Morning News. What Super Bowl commercial? We all get certain celebrities mixed up, white, black, or other. When you're an entertainment journalist, though, you need to get all the facts straight, especially when you're doing live TV. In this 2014 KTLA Morning News interview, Sam Rubin accidentally confuses Sam Jackson with fellow African-American actor Lawrence Fishburne. You're, you're as crazy as the people on Twitter. Right. I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> That's my fault. Oh, I know boy. that. That was my fault. Uh, my mistake. You know what? We don't all look alike. Fuck. While Rubin tried to make peace and move on, Jackson wasn't willing to let it go. Uh, I'm the two... what's in your wallet, black guy. Okay. Oh. He's the car black guy. There it is. Morgan Freeman is the other credit card black guy. <laughs> if these two had been in the same building, Jackson probably would have sat Rubin down and started quoting the Bible in furious anger. And I'm really embarrassed about it. And I very much apologize to Samuel L. Jackson and anyone else who was offended for what was a very amateur mistake. Number five. Kanye West crashes Taylor Swift's VMA speech, the MTV Video Music Awards. Yo, Taylor, I, I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. Kanye's had his fair share of uncomfortable TV appearances, like that time he dissed George W. Bush on a Hurricane Katrina telethon. George Bush doesn't care about black people. But the rapper broke new ground for Jack Assery at the 2009 VMAs, when Taylor Swift won the award for Best Female Video. Unable to fathom the idea that Beyonce's single ladies didn't win. Kanye jumped on stage, stole Swift's mic, and proclaimed that his beloved Beyonce was the true victor. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Kanye was subsequently booed off stage and removed from the ceremony. This move was so dumb, even President Obama couldn't contain his opinion. The young lady seems like a perfectly nice person. She's getting her award. What's he doing? Why would he do that? He's a jackass. Fortunately, Taylor got her happy ending later that night. I remember being 17 years old, up for my first MTV award with Destiny's Child, and it was one of the most exciting moments in my life. So I'd like for Taylor to come out and have her moment. Number four, Sinead O'Connor tears up the Pope's photo Saturday Night Live. We have confidence. Seeing how Saturday Night Live is, well, live, the late night variety show has inevitably produced a few controversial, unscripted moments. You know what? You stood up for yourself, and I love you for that. The program hit a particularly rocky speed bump in 1992 when Sinead O'Connor appeared as the musical guest. Protesting sexual abuse in the Catholic Church, O'Connor sang Bob Marley's War a cappella and held up a photo of Pope John Paul II. Of good over evil. After ripping the photo into shreds, she implored audiences to fight the real enemy. At least SNL would never have a musical moment this awkward again. Number three, the Ashley Simpson lip syncing incident, Saturday Night Live. With you, I so fast. In 2004, Ashley Simpson was booked as SNL's musical guest. Although Simpson's Pieces of Me went off without a hitch, things got muddled with her second song. Fall, so Instead of singing autobiography as planned, the vocals for Pieces of Me started to play again before Simpson even opened her mouth. On a Monday, I'm waiting. Tuesday, I'm fading. Caught lip syncing, Simpson tried to salvage the performance with an awkward dance, then shamefully walked off stage. As embarrassing as the ordeal was, it didn't stop Simpson from returning to Saturday Night Live a year later with no complications. I'm John Heater and I'm hosting SNL with Ashley Simpson. Ashley says she's really excited. 
She's saving her voice for the show. Number two, it, I quit. The Anchorage 11 KTVA News. I sat and I thought out loud. Anybody who's lost passion for their work has likely fantasized about quitting in a blaze of glory. Speaking of blazes, Charlotte Green got to live the dream when she quit her job as a reporter for KTVA News. So as a mom, you weren't concerned at all about marijuana? No. After reporting on the Anchorage, Alaska Medical Marijuana Organization, the Alaska Cannabis Club, Green revealed herself as its owner and said she had decided to put less time into journalism and more into legalizing marijuana. Now, everything you heard is why I, the actual owner of the Alaska Cannabis Club, will be dedicating all of my energy toward fighting for freedom and fairness. Rather than giving her bosses two weeks notice, she came out and said exactly what was on her mind. And as for this job, well, not that I have a choice, but I quit. Green's now former colleague was at a loss for words. We'll be, we'll be right back. I mean, uh, pardon for us. Before we drop our jaws at our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Well, Guy Cuny is the editor of the technology website uh, News Wireless. Hello, good morning to you. It's really cool because it, it records much more accurately than... Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Fox 5 Morning News starts. Look over there. And it starts right now. So uh, you're going to do a spoken word for us now, right? Right. Number one, Janet Jackson's wardrobe malfunction, Super Bowl 38. Five times. Oh. The final score of Super Bowl 38 was an afterthought. Hell, we bet you don't even remember who played. All anyone recalls is the event's legendary halftime show. As Justin Timberlake joined Janet Jackson on stage, the two icons performed a duet of Rock Your Body. Towards the song's conclusion, Timberlake reached out and tore off a piece of Jackson's clothing, exposing her right breast. This song. It was visible for less than a second, but the boob seen round the world resulted in a public outcry. Almost 10 years later, the incident, now known as Nipplegate, is still the defining wardrobe malfunction. The infamous incident prompted the FCC to fine CBS $550,000. Do you agree with our list? The type is all off, sorry, but I'll just wing this. What live TV moment left you speechless? For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Fight the real enemy!